Hi, this is Peter Schiff, and a couple of weeks ago, I was down in New Orleans for an investment conference, and I had the pleasure of sitting down with well-known money manager and hard currency advocate, Axel Merck. And we both agreed that owning gold is important given today's economic climate. So I hope you enjoy our conversation. When you're talking about the history of gold, you know, you, of course, you start correctly, right, in 1970, because you're going back to before we basically went off the gold standard. Because if you really want to compare the, the performance of gold to other assets, you really need to go back to when we left the gold standard. But of course, all of the people who want to you know, play down the role in the returns on gold, they never start in 1970. They start in 1980 to try to show what a bad wait, investment wait, wait, wait. gold no, no, no. was when you they take back, a peak. Go back 100 years. Oh, right? yeah. Uh, go back to 1914. We've run studies. Um, going back to, now obviously you weren't allowed to hold gold during the sum period, but having gold as part of your portfolio, if you do a portfolio optimization with perfect hindsight, now there's plenty of problems with perfect hindsight, plenty of problems with portfolio optimization, uh, and choose between equities and gold, you're coming up with numbers such as 30% allocations to gold. And I'm not suggesting everybody should. I, I personally have more than 30%, but that's not the right thing for everybody. But basically, if something has a low correlation, and positive returns, you want to have it in your portfolio. And if you think gold is going to have a positive return in dollar terms over the next couple of years, well, why not have it if it has a low correlation? And indeed, gold has a wonderful low correlation. No, not every day. There will be times when for a couple of weeks it will move in tandem with the markets. And by the way, during the peak of the Eurozone debt crisis, most people know the way up, the Euro and gold were extremely highly correlated. But what they really need to compare gold to is other currencies like the dollar or the yen or the euro or pick a currency. And if you want to compare gold to the dollar over extended periods of time and say, if you were going to keep liquidity, if you didn't want to buy assets for whatever reason, you wanted liquidity, where did you preserve your purchasing power? Were you better off you know, holding dollars in a bank account or burying gold in your backyard? And you'd want to go back 100 years even probably with the interest that you could have earned on a bank deposit, you still have more purchasing power today just burying gold than depositing dollars in a bank. And of course, if you stuff those dollars under your mattress compared to gold, you've lost almost everything. Yeah, and and I, I agree. The, the, to us, there are different ways of looking at it, and they come down to different risk profiles. People invest in equities, well, it's very risky, right? Um, and then you, gold obviously is volatile as well. Well, when you buy currencies, the volatility is less, but sometimes returns are less as well. And so we think that if one believes that we have the better printing press than the rest of the world, well, then gold should do well, then other currencies should do well. If you think that we have currency wars where things got whacked around, well, you might want to be a bit more tactical. Now, it's not everybody's interest to be very tactical, and so you'd rather have a long-term position, but there are different ways to approach these markets. They all have their pros and cons, uh, but if you look at longer periods, well, and if you don't want to be so active, buying gold is, is probably yeah. one of the and better And of course, choices. gold is the only true winner in a currency war, because when everybody is printing money, then gold's going to rise in all currencies, because while central bankers can all print their respective currencies, none of them can print gold. So the supply of paper money continues to grow, and the supply of gold is not. Every major central bank in the world has tried to talk down the dollar. And, and as you point out, well, the winner of that is, of course, gold. Swiss are going to vote to require the Swiss National Bank to have 20% of its reserves in gold. Now, I think Switzerland was really the worst, last country, rather, to leave the gold standard officially. And when they did, their reserves were substantially in gold. And I think the Swiss, over the years, have sold more than half their gold. Meanwhile, they've been buying euros like crazy. Right, in order to prevent the franc from rising, to protect their people from a falling cost of living, right, deflation. So now they have enormous reserves, and their gold reserves are now down to about 7 or 8%. So if this passes, they're going to have to buy a lot of gold. It also requires them uh, to repatriate their gold that they're be having stored in other countries, bring it back to Switzerland. First of all, as we're speaking, the uh, polls are leaning towards acceptance. Now, the experts in Switzerland say it will not pass. Now, the experts have been wrong before, um, but um, right now it has a chance of passing. And uh, as you point out, the establishment is very much against it, which also means if it were to pass, the establishment is going to drag its heels implementing it. So it's not going to happen tomorrow that they're going to buy 
many, many tons of gold. Um, uh, some estimates say that they'll do that over five years or so. I think the most relevant thing here is that there is a grassroots effort in an entire country to move there. And this is, I think, just the beginning. And you mentioned earlier that you know, Americans have a lot of debt, so they want inflation. Well, the Swiss have a lot of savings. They don't want inflation. They want to protect the value of what they saved. They want to save their currency from these central bankers and politicians who are trying to destroy its value. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're talking about the people versus the government. The government wants to debase the currency. I, I sometimes think about the Swiss as, think about you in this, in this rotten neighborhood, but you have this one house with a beautiful backyard. In order to blend in, you're going to dump your garbage into your own backyard as well. That's what the Swiss are doing. They've been living off their reputation. Now, luckily, underneath the surface, there are many things that are moving in the right direction, but the government policies are, are heading towards placing the garbage in, in, in the backyard. And then, of course, you, you have Mr. Jordan, the head of the, the Swiss National Bank. He tells you, hey, we're going to defend this peg no matter what. Well, good luck doing that if you have to own 20% in gold. And so it's going to get very difficult because suddenly it's not that easy anymore to print an unlimited amount to do that. So as investors in hard assets know, uh, prices have been taking a beating. Uh, recently, pretty much all the commodities have been under pressure. We know gold prices have come down too. A lot of other fiat currencies have fallen. The dollar has strengthened. Even the new you know, cryptocurrencies, you know, they've come down. It seems like the only thing that's going up right now is the US dollar. And this has really emboldened all of the dollar bulls and the defenders of the Fed and, and, and QE to say, aha, you know, this proves that all the gold bugs, you know, the Peter Schiffs, the Axel Merckx, those guys have been wrong. Uh, the Fed has been vindicated. The dollar has been vindicated. What do you say uh, to, to those people who are claiming a victory? When everybody jumps on the same bandwagon, I get concerned. Especially when, for the fundamental reasons, I think that um, we could have a crash in the stock market when complacency is record highs. When I think that, um, yes, there's low inflation. Well, the time to buy gold is to buy, uh, is when there's low inflation in Miami. The, the time to sell gold was when Volcker came in to crush inflation. But Janet Yellen is no Volcker. And, 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 and just, just, just a little bit, and not just in size, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and so um, I have absolutely no problem with the market disagreeing with me. In fact, I get concerned when others agree with me. So the more people disagree with, with my views, um, the, the more emboldened I get with my positions. Usually. Yeah, and you know, people always say, well, you know, if you know it's a fun ride, why not climb on board and, 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 and enjoy it with everybody else? And see, the problem I have is you can only enjoy the ride if you don't realize how disastrously it's going to end. So if since I know it's going to end in a wreck, I can enjoy it. If I get on board, I'm going to be nervous the whole time. We have to have an adjustment in that. And where, where are you going to be? Yeah. Um, and even if you, have, if, you, if you don't have Peter Schiff views, if you don't have my views, well, shouldn't you rebalance your portfolio? And hasn't the equity portion of your portfolio gone up in price? So where on earth do you put this stuff? Do you want to put it into bonds? Uh. Well, bonds have done just fine, but I, I'm not going to touch them with a broomstick. And so we like currencies, we like gold. I'm sure there are other alternatives out there. Bernanke, the one thing I liked about him, he said he had a toolbox. Well, we gotta have our toolbox to fight his toolbox. What do you think about physical precious metals? What do you see as the role for physical ownership of gold in a investor's portfolio? I have, a, I have all of it. I have physical gold in my pocket, coins and bars. I mean, not in this pocket here, but yeah. um, I, have, I have an ETF. I have mining, I have, I, I even have derivatives. Um, and so there, there's a place for everything. Um, if you are in a true crisis and you need to have access to a coin, you're not going to get a ex any change for your, yeah. your bar, so you may want to have a coin. Um, uh, the, the nice thing about the coin is you can easily transfer it to somebody else, you can give some to your kids. Um, and obviously, the, 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 the core challenge with gold is that gold itself is risk-free. That's why people love it. The problem is the moment you touch it, you're introducing risk. And you're introducing risk when you have it in a financial institution. Is it allocated? Is it unallocated? You're introducing risk when it's under your pillow. You need to buy the gun as well to, to protect it. I think that if you're prudent with your own gold, you can find ways of, of, of keeping it safe and storing it safely you know, in your house. Um, and certainly if there's a, main, if there's a crisis, you know, that gold that's readily available might be more valuable to you, but you don't need all of your gold and, and readily to available. Take it a step further, the reason why people buy the standard coins, like a gold eagle or Canadian maple or whatever it may be, is because they're easily recognizable. When you buy a London bar, 
-hmm. No retail yeah. person has an interest in Onibo. First of all, it's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, the quality is inferior to the mm -hmm. coin. And what are you going to do with it? How are you going to trade it? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's fine for institutional trading, but it's not fi fine for yeah. the person. And, and then, of course, you, you have numismatics, exotic coins, and whatever it is. But they, they all have their own place for a different type of uh, investor. Yeah, and of course, some people, you know, they like to have coins that are private and anonymous. I mean, if you own a gold coin and you have it and you dispose of it, I mean, if you give it to somebody or barter it with somebody, I mean, the transaction is done. Um, you know, and people like to have some assets where it's not all about paperwork and, and reporting and having to worry about, about all that. You know, when you have a brokerage account and you have ETFs and you have all that, there's all these statements, there's all these transaction records. Then you get great here, yeah. Yeah, and, and so people just, because <laughs> you never know. I mean, it's not that people yeah. want to do something illegal, but people fear that the government may do something illegal in the future, may do something oppressive in the future. They might want to confiscate gold, and they can't confiscate it if they don't know where you have it. But if you have it in a brokerage account, right, or you know, they know where it is and they can take it, right? But if you have it buried somewhere or in a safe, they can't get exactly. at it. Exactly. So it's, it's about the trade-off between the ease of liquidity to trade it and the safety of having it. We try to combine the two with saying, hey, you can trade it, and if you want delivery, you can send it anywhere in the world. Um, but for some people, that's not good enough, and that's absolutely fine. Um, and, and so some people say, hey, get, send the coin to home. Now, if you can publish your home address and say exactly on which shelf you hold all, all your gold, see, you're not comfortable with that either. Right? And so each one of these choices has some trade-offs. Trade -offs.